everyone. This is a video tutorial to help you understand how hybridization can affect the pKa of a compound. So the first thing we want to do is talk about sp hybrid orbitals. There are three possibilities for hybrids that we'll see when we mix s and p orbitals. We have an sp, an sp2, and an sp3. The important point about each one of these is how much s character they have. So in order to determine the s character of an orbital, what we're going to do is figure out what percent of this orbital is s and what percent is p. So for this first case, because one out of these two orbitals is s, it would be 50% s, 50% p. Applying those same principles, we get 33% s, 67% p for sp2, and we get a 25-75 split for sp3. The reason we care about S character is because, on average in an orbital, you're going to have electrons closer to the nucleus when they are in an S. This is important because when the electrons are closer to the nucleus, your negative charge is closer to your positive charge, and that's a very stabilizing feature. Let's take a look at how this will affect the pKa. Okay, so let's take this and apply it to an actual example. So let's say on an exam you're given a question like this, and the question is asking you to explain why it is that this compound here is more acidic than this one over here. Remember, you can tell it's more acidic because the pKa that we have is a much lower number than this 60, and the lower the number, the more acidic the compound. So now what you want to do is, you notice that in every case it's a carbon that is losing the hydrogen. So that means you know you're not dealing with a size or an electronegativity difference. The only difference between these compounds is the hybridization of the carbon that's losing the hydrogen. So if I take a look at this carbon here, it has two areas of electron density. One is the triple bond and one is the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen, which means that this would be an sp hybrid. This carbon has three areas of electron density, so this would be an sp2. And this carbon here has four areas, so this would be an sp3. The next thing you might want to do is take a look at the conjugates. Looking at the conjugate base of a substance is very often a helpful way to understand how you can explain the phenomena that you're seeing. So over here, to make the conjugate, I'm going to remove one hydrogen from each of the carbons. It doesn't matter which carbon you pick, I just pick the one on the left. So now this carbon here has more electrons than it typically would have because when the hydrogen was taken, both electrons that were in that bond have been placed onto the carbon. So now remember, in an sp hybrid, the electrons are going to be closer to the nucleus on average, which means that they're closer to what they're attracted to. When electrons are closer to protons, they're more stable. So that means that this compound here, because the electrons are more stable or because they're closer to the nucleus, would be easier to form than this compound here, which has much less S character because it's an sp3 hybrid.